Hey everyone, for the second half of today's Admin Costello double feature, we have their 1952 comedy, Abbott and Costello Meet Captain Kidd. Now, on the island of Tortuga, tavern waiters Rocky Stonebridge, Bud Abbott, and Oliver Puddinhead Johnson, Lou Costello, are given a container with a love letter by Lady Jane, Fran Warren, to give to their buddy and tavern singer, Bruce Martingale, Bill Shirley. Now, at the tavern, Oliver has to wait on Captain William Kidd, Charles Lawton, who is meeting with his rival, Captain Bonnie, Hillary Brook. Captain Bonnie is accusing Captain Kidd of stealing jewels from her territory and is demanding that he split the treasure with her. While he's waiting on them, Oliver accidentally gets the containers for the treasure map and Lady Jane's letter mixed up and ends up with the map. Rocky senses an opportunity to get in on the treasure, although it almost gets them both into trouble. However, Captain Kidd is forced to bring them along since they, he did manage to hide the map successfully. Now, Before sailing off to Skull Island, Captain Kidd shanghais a number of men into service on his boat a group that includes Bruce. Now, on the trip, both Captain Kidd and Captain Bonnie attempt to get the map from Rocky and Oliver without success. At one point, Captain Kidd and his crew attack another ship, and wouldn't you know it, Lady Jane is on that ship. Now, she is captured and taken along as a prisoner. Now, once they reach Skull Island, Rocky and Oliver have to help find the treasure before Captain Kidd double-crosses both them and Captain Bonnie. Can they escape his clutches and still end up with the treasure? Now, for Bud and Lou, their contract with Universal allowed them to try doing some independent films here and there. And around 1952, they tried to do two films through their own production companies in the hopes of being able to do them in color something that Universal Studios had not been willing to pay for. Now, under Lou's production company, Exclusive Productions, they made Jack and the Beanstalk. And for Bud's company, Woodley Productions, they made Evan and Costello meet Captain Kidd. Now, they really got lucky for this movie, as Charles Lawton was the rare Oscar-winning actor that actually wanted to work with them in the movies. They were able to get him after he had expressed interest in the project as he wanted to learn from them. Actually, specifically, he had wanted to learn the double take from Lou. Now, of course, he was reprising a character he had played, although in a serious role, for the 1945 Universal film Captain Kidd. But he still took on the comedic aspects with relish, even wanting to do his own pratfalls. Now, for me, this movie is a lot of fun and one of those I probably don't watch it as often as I should type of movies. The way I like it. Bud and Lou are fun here, that's certainly not in doubt. And Lou gets to do the one handcuff routine with Charles Lawton, which is hilarious. Plus, we have the scene early on where Charles Lawton, Hilary Brook, and Lou all eat a meal that accidentally had a bar of soap mixed into it. And thus, they are all blowing bubbles as they speak. Admittedly, I think the bubbles are all animated, but honestly, who cares? Then there's Bud and Lou's attempts to dig up the treasure and how they keep getting in each other's way. I would say that Charles Lawton keeps up with them and almost manages to steal the picture from them, with my favorite moment from him being near the end of the movie as his character is a bit more loopy, especially ha after having had to deal with all of Lou's character's antics. The whole scene there just breaks me up every time. Sure, this movie does veer back into musical territory with mostly forgettable music, plus the side romance really not quite working, and quite frankly, the only purpose it serves is the letter, which Hilary Brooks' Captain Bonnie assumes was written to Lou's character, which is amusing in and of itself. But for me, these are minor issues. All in all, I think this one is a fun film. And far better than most of the boys' universal output this time, so it's an easy thing for me to recommend this movie. This movie is available on DVD from Warner Archive Collection, and it's one hour and ten minutes in length. 
Well, that should be all I have to say on this one, everybody. So thanks for listening, and I hope you'll keep tuning in for more.